Hello my wonderful people, it's Bloody Jack from the Bloody Jack channel. And I think it's time we finally review Dragon Ball Evolutions. Let's watch. There is no hope for anime anymore. <laughs> well, that was awful. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Dragon Ball Evolution is the god-awful abomination directed by James Wong, who is actually known for directing the first and third Final Destination movies. And this is also based on the beloved manga and anime series made by Akira Toriyama. So the history of Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball or Dragon Boru is a dra is a Japanese anime show produced by Toei Animation and it is an adaptation of the first 194 chapters of the manga written and illustrated by Akira Toriyama which were published in the Weekly Shonen Jump between 1984 and 1995. The anime consists of over 153 episodes over the course of five seasons that were broadcast on Fuji TV from February 1986 to April 1989 in 81 countries worldwide. Then it got continued by Dragon Ball Z, and then completely butchered by Dragon Ball GT, but then Dragon Ball Z got the retelling through Dragon Ball Z Kai, and then recently continued with Dragon Ball Super with its first season actually finishing as recent of 2018. <clears throat> the plot of Dragon Ball Evolution. 2000 years ago, the Demon Lord Piccolo came to Earth to wreaking havoc along with his minion the Uzaru. Seven mystics created the powerful enchantment called the Mafuba and used it to seal Piccolo away. However, he breaks free in the present day and with his ninja henchwoman Mai, begins searching for the seven Dragon Balls, each one marked with the stars numbering from one to five, not one to five, one to seven, <laughs> killing anyone in his path. But enough about that shit. That actually sounds good. Instead, in this movie we're following Goku, a teenager who lives in the woods with his grandfather Gohan, along with the most cliche dialogue ever written by man. After his grandfather's death, Goku must team up with a woman named Bulma <clears throat> to gather all the seven Dragon Balls before the solar eclipse. And all I gotta say, other than from that short cutaway gag, you can tell I hate this movie. So, let's get on with it, with the story. Goku lives in the middle of buttfuck nowhere with his grandpa Gohan, but upon his 18th birthday, Goku is given the four-starred Dragon Ball and is told if he gathers all seven of them, he'll be able to summon the eternal dragon, Shenron, who will grant him only one wish. Piccolo, on the other hand, is touring all across the world with Mai, gathering the Dragon Balls for himself to, you know, get immortality, to regain the youth after being trapped inside the Mabufa, and conquer the world, I guess, and with the help of the Uzaru. Uh, Gohan gets game-ended completely in the first 15 minutes. Um... <clears throat> Yeah. Uh, Goku, trying not to be a simp for Chi-Chi, slides into 
her DMs with his head across the fucking car. Which, I'll be honest, is what I wish happened through this whole movie. Uh, Goku finds the dying Gohan on the floor, and then tells him to find Master Roshi, who either knows where the Dragon Balls are, or knows how to defeat Piccolo before the Eclipse. Because to be honest, I don't really know, because I already zoned out at this point while watching the movie, writing up my notes for the review. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and also I was thinking about how I can watch a way much better movie, like Dragon Ball Path to Power. Fake Goku, or Ukog as I'll now call him for the rest of the review, meets Bulsma, who talks about how she's attracted to... Yeah. And how she thinks they'll benefit mankind by creating an eternal power source. Which I don't really think would be the best route to go. Considering, I'll put an example here. On creating a paranormal, or trying to create an eternal power source that'll benefit mankind out of a supernatural creation. And you can see why. Uh, they meet the only good character in this movie, I gotta say. Um, Master Roshi, although looks nothing like his manga and anime counterpart, but I still believe he is the only reason that this movie exists. Because the will of Roshi demands it. Goku informs Roshi about Gohan dying of crippling debt. Roshi tells Goku that he'll take him to the Seven Mystics, possibly the mystics from the Dark Crystal to grab a Mafuba and at the same time collect the other Dragon Balls because this is apparently a Dragon Ball movie. Goku, Bulma and the big Chad Roshi end up at the Stone Temple where Ukog sorry I keep referring to him as Goku because it's now constantly flickering into my mind. Ukog Bulma and Roshi end up getting to the Stone Temple, where Ukog finds Chi-Chi, and I know I need to bring this up, but instead of calling this sacred move in the movie, known as the Kamehameha, you know, the most famous move in the anime, like, it's been shown at the climax of basically almost every single arc, especially of Dragon Ball Z, instead they call it as a form of airbending. Think about it. This is the Kamehameha. And this is airbending. I don't know about you guys. But I think they got their anime shows mixed up. Anyway. The characters fall down into a pit and meet Yamcha. Night falls. And then Roshi retells the fucking intro to the movie, as if, if you actually watch the movie, they do it five times to retell the opening to the movie. But I shall continue and hold my rage. I'll keep my cool for the rest of the review. And also Roshi jumps out of the pit, and you can just ask yourself why didn't he do that from the start. Then they somehow make their way all the way to a volcano, they see a dragon ball, but also come into contact with these retarded looking Cybermen. This is getting to the end of the movie, so I'm not even going to put a skip to thing here in case you actually want to watch Dragon Ball Evolution, which I doubt you will. So here's the ending of the movie. Nothing else important really happens, so I'm just going to skip all the way to the final fight with Piccolo and Ukog. They get to the Dragon Temple, where Piccolo can summon Shenron. Uh, turns out, in case you haven't actually figured this shit out yet, but Ukog is the Uzaru. Now in the anime and manga, the Uzaru is a very powerful being of brute force, and is also a giant ape, which is a huge reference to King Kong. Um, <clears throat> and what do we get out of this? Ukog turning into a were monkey. 
which kind of looks like a very poorly rendered version of Caesar from Rise of the Planet of the Apes. And also he's wearing a bootleg version of the Gi from the anime, because everyone was just like, the director's just like, oh look, it's that thing everyone knows. I mean, I'm wearing a Gi hoodie as well myself, but I, know, I ain't complaining. Anyway, Roshi fails to seal Piccolo into the Mafuba, Yamcha gets pimp smacked through a fucking wall, and Roshi straight up dies. And Mai pretty much gets game ended too, but you don't really see it on screen. Ukog basically performs the Kamehameha against Piccolo, which although really looks like the Super Dragon Fist. Uh, they use the seven Dragon Balls to summon Shenron and bring back Roshi from the dead. That's it, movie done, and I'm not playing the end credit scene because it's over and it's the fucking end of the movie. So, keeping my rage still somewhat intact, let's talk about the characters. With Goku, I can deal with Goku being white in an adaptation. I mean, obviously it's an American adaptation and some things have to change. But I don't think they should have made him a teenager, which does kind of get rid of his childlike nature and st from the anime and in the manga. Because, you know, in the original Dragon Ball he is a child, and then evolves into a teenager through the hyperbolic time chamber, then becomes a young adult near the final, few se well, the final couple seasons. Anyway, but for the whole movie, we're just stuck with this annoying, idiotic dickhead who, just like Rey from Star Wars, thinks that just keeping your mouth and eyes wide open equals acting. And not only that, but every scene he's in, it looks like he's about to shit him. He's either about to pass a kidney stone or absolutely shit himself. I mean, I probably would if I had a punchable face like his. Now we have Bulma. All I can say about Bulma is that she looks absolutely 0% like she does from the anime and manga. Instead of having completely blue hair, or purple hair if you read the manga, instead she just has a single line of hair that's dyed blue. Just like Sweeney Todd from Sweeney Todd, who has the single strand, well not strand, like a single line of white hair. And she's boring, uninteresting, and it's just a poor rendition of one of the most famous anime MILFs. Yeah, one of the most famous anime MILFs in the world. <laughs> Next, we have Chi Chi. Now the only thing I can say about Chi Chi is that she's the only actress that actually seems like she's trying in this. But just like Bulma, she's absolutely boring as fuck. Then we have the main villain, Piccolo. Piccolo, played by James Masters. Wait, why have I heard that name before? Well, what do you expect? Out alone in this neighborhood? I got half a mind to kill you myself, you half-wit. What? I mean, honestly, what kind of retard wears heels like that in a dark alley? Take two steps, break your bloody ankle. No. No. You. Yeah. Just turn around and walk away. You're a- Spike! You're a bloody puppet! Anyway, this is where the movie suffers horribly. Piccolo looks absolutely almost like his anime counterpart, just with a bit more of a- He looks more like a Cyberman than what a Namekian does. I mean, would it really kill him to add some bandana? Not a bandana. To add, a, yeah, a bandana, shoulder pads, and antennae. Not bandana, a turban. Uh, I can only assume that this is supposed to be King Piccolo from the start of the show. Who, uh, instead, he ends up looking like a green version of Ivan Ooze from the Power Rangers movie. Only without the entertainment value. Next, we have Yamcha. Yamcha is always sucked ass. And that's all I can say. <laughs> Yamcha's just the butt of every single joke in the Dragon Ball universe. Everyone knows it. Next we have Roshi. Roshi's the only good thing in this whole movie. And yeah, he's played by the bold Chinese guy from Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End. 
He just, again, is not tiny, bold, has white hair, and an old twat. But he's still the best thing in this whole movie, and the only reason why I actually watched this movie, not only because of the fact for reviewing it, and because I'm a Dragon Ball fan, but also I heard that Roshi is actually the only good thing in this movie. Then, we st and finally, we have Grandpa Gohan. It's been a little while since I've actually watched the original Dragon Ball show, but what I do remember is that we barely see that much of Grandpa Gohan anyway because he actually has been dead through a good majority of the show. We only see him come back in like a spirit or through memories of Goku. But we barely... This is a somewhat of a good idea in the movie to actually see more of Gohan and Goku interact. But with the way the movie's actually written, it's actually just not done in the best way possible. Which concludes us to my final verdict. Dragon Ball Evolution is a complete waste of time and no one should actually be subjected to such blasphemy to the Dragon Ball franchise. If you want to find some movies that actually get you into the Dragon Ball franchise, what I can recommend you guys to watch is Path to Power, Battle of the Gods, and Dragon Ball Super Broly. That's it, that's all you need to watch. I have been Bloody Jack and this has been my Dragon Ball Evolution review. I hope you guys liked it. And wait, what's the date today? September 30th. That means Halloween's tomorrow. No, it's the start of the Halloween season. You know what that means? It's time to get... Spoopy. So, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what you think of the Dragon Ball Evolution movie. I'll be sure to review more live-action adaptations of famous anime movies as we go along. And I'll see you guys in the next one.